here we go we're gonna move on to the effects tab now go ahead and click on the effects tab and it's gonna switch the windows over to where you've got maximum video real estate and you can make this bigger or smaller however you want um, by uh, clicking on this window and you can drag this over if you'd like to so you can see more of it or see less of it I will tell you uh, once you start getting the effects if you don't have a great computer you might notice that things start to slow down um, it might already be slowed down um, what you can do to help out with this on the right you will see here where it says full this is your playback resolution right now it's trying to play back at the maximum full resolution which I'm working with 4k footage right here on this drone shot so if your computer is struggling go ahead and click on this and you can change this down to half resolution or even a quarter resolution and don't worry about it it's fine you can once you render it out you can switch this back up and watch it in its full glory but for the most part you're not gonna need to see every little pixel and stuff because we're just doing a rough cut right now with our edit so you if you, if you need to set this down um, to a lower resolution it will look pretty uh, questionable uh, at times it's not the worst but wh when you're playing it it'll be a, a little bit grainy but it's better than not being able to see it at all so remember that um, I'm gonna keep it at full because I, I I have a rig that can do that so with this let's work on some video effects now there are tons of effects built into Premiere um, that you can do uh, one of the best ones that uh, people will use if you have shaky footage um, or something like that is called oh, the warp stabilizer it's under video effects under distort um, but this makes it quick and simple um, because the windows are so big you can see what the effects are doing and you've got a large large timeline here unlike in the editing tab where everything's so scrunched up and you've got all this uh, stuff in the way uh, so working with the effects um, tab can make things a little bit easier on your eyes now warp stabilizer the video effect uh, smooths out moving footage um, so shaky camera and stuff we really don't have any shaky camera um, footage to show you here so um, but that is an option to use on some shaky footage and I just wanted to point that out because a lot of people wonder how I can make my footage less shaky how can I make it look smoother and warp stabilizer is what people use in here but there's all sorts of video effects uh, the, don't think that's the only thing um, that's built into Premiere and you can add all sorts of different ones um, but this is one of the many effects you can also do audio effects as well if you need to from here in audio transitions um, but I just wanted to show you the effects tab and some of the things that you can do with that um, the effect controls let's go over that let's say you want to fade one track into another but you don't want to cross dissolve them you want a different type of fade let's go back to the editing tab and to the left is effect controls we'll click on that again it's gonna pull up all sorts of different things and this is where you're gonna see the effects that you've applied anything else that is going on with the video now when you're doing this make sure that the video that you want to edit is highlighted down on the on the track right now we've got the video title highlighted everything over here on the left is gonna be on that video title and we don't want to do that we want to edit what we see over here on the right which is the phone so go ahead and click on that and you can see the left changed because we don't have a title we don't have a bunch of other stuff on top of this track let's go ahead and do some basic effects here with uh, fading and doing other things so let's say you want to see more of your track this is something I should have talked about earlier but let's go ahead and go over it now 
um, press the Alt key on your timeline and use the scroll wheel if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel and you can scroll this video up to see it and so you can actually see a little preview of your video or you can scroll down this just makes it easier to see you can also grab it and drag it this way but I find hitting alt and then scrolling to be a really quick way to resize everything um, a little bit more accurately so let's do a zoom let's say we want to make a, a custom zoom on this track um, what you're going to use is called a keyframe this is basically telling Premiere like where you want to, the effect to start and where you want to, to end on your video track right here is a little playhead and a little timeline and this is just the video track from beginning to end as you can see as I'm scrolling here it's doing the same down at the bottom All right. So let's say we want to zoom slowly in and then stop about halfway into the track. How do we do that? Well, go over here to where it says scale. There's going to be a little stopwatch to the left. Go, Make sure your track's at the beginning and click that little stopwatch. That will create your first keyframe. This is our starting point. Now, let's scroll to where we want the zoom to end right here and go ahead and click on this little icon right here um, this will add a keyframe there's another way you can do it um, the keyframe has been added right on the playhead but if you undo that just by changing the scale here we've got it at 100 right now just by changing it to let's say 120 it will automatically add a keyframe right underneath the playhead to 120. And as long as you already made the first keyframe right here, which is defaulted to 100, it's going to start at 100 and move up the scale. As you can see, as I move the playhead, the numbers are climbing. And that is going to stop at 120. And let's go ahead and look at it on the right here and show you exactly what that's doing. It's doing a zoom really easily. That's simple. If you want to change where this ends, you can cl simply click on the keyframe and drag it over or drag it forward and you can make a very quick zoom by dragging it close together. Boom. Or you can make it a very slow dramatic zoom by making them far apart. Very subtle and not too noticeable. But it's there. And then adding movement this way can really enhance your videos if you were shooting solo and you can't um, do the camera work at the same time as shoot the video. And you have to use a tripod. You can also do uh, certain things like uh, rotation if you want to turn the video and stuff like that. It all works the same way. So go ahead and mess around here with your effects. Um, another thing I do want to show you real quick is again fading the video. Um, if you actually look here since we've made this larger you see a slider that appears on the video track. This is the opacity slider. You can drag this down to make it a 50% opacity so that see this overlap um, the video on top is going to show through anything below it and you can make this opacity m more or less depending on how much you want the video to show through but here's the key if you want to fade it in or out you can do a keyframe directly onto the track to do this and this is where using the up and down arrow keys is very useful see this right here i'm pressing the up key down key and switching between the beginning and the end. This allows you to quickly make transitions. A quick fade in with the top track by pressing this. Um, and if you look all the way to the left, follow the mouse, there's a little button here that says add and remove keyframe. If you click on that, it adds a keyframe 
directly onto the track and you'll see it appear underneath the playhead where that slider is. You've added a keyframe here, you can hit the up arrow key and it'll bring you to the beginning of that track and you can add another keyframe and then you can take that keyframe and you can drag it. If you drag it down to zero, you've created a fade immediately directly on the track without having to find the effect or add it. And it's going to keep the bottom track at a solid 100%. And so it's a little bit of a different of a fade. Um, I prefer fading it in this way. There, You have preferences. The cross dissolve is great, but maybe you want it to be a little bit different. I like, I like fading a track in this way a little bit better than using a cross dissolve because the bottom track lingers a little bit longer um, than normal. And you can also do it for this bottom track and you can you might want to do um, a half cross dissolve where the opacity on this ends up being a 50%. Go ahead and hit alt and you can scroll up. And same thing here, you see the, uh, the track. Um, if you need to make this larger or smaller, you can drag this down for video, drag it back up. But uh, you can go to the end with the down key, uh, or I guess the beginning of this track, and select this uh, video file, add a keyframe, go to the end, add another keyframe, and then just do a 50% uh, fade here so that the cross dissolve is a little less harsh than before. <laughs> you can really mess with it, and you can really dial it in to how you want. So, uh, whoops, let me show you. You can actually, and you can see this real time too as you're doing this. So this this is why I love doing it this way because I can see ex just exactly where this video is going to fade out. Um, if I wanted to do it, this is a full cross dissolve where one video, the video beneath fades out uh, just as the other one is fully faded in. Um, there's multiple ways that you can do it, but that's just one of them and uh, just thought I'd show you. So go ahead and mess with those. Get used to editing the effects and the effect controls on each of your videos and we'll go over color grading and color correction in the next video.